Okay, fine. So let's continue with the casting defects. In casting defects, we can categorize this casting defects into, and you, you I, and please do remember, casting defects, as I told you, lots and lots of casting defects are there. The problem with casting is that we are trying to uh, liquefy the metal and then we are trying to pour into the cavity. That is a problem. Because of that liquefaction and pouring into sand, uh, sand, uh, you know, molding sand, reaction between molding sand and liquefied metal, reaction of liquefied metal with the ambience, it will make so much hangama. Because of that, so many defects will come. And while solidifying, it is not, it will not solidify properly if you are not pro providing proper uh, temperature gradient, how much time you are pouring, how much time you are uh, allowing it to solidify, what are the, uh, uh, what is the riser uh, element, uh, volume that you are providing, right? Everything is important. Are you providing vent holes or not? So many problems are there in casting defects. If you see, you take any uh, manufacturing procedure, casting is the procedure where you have so many defects. But, but it, that is a basic procedure that you have to do before any manufacturing process, in, especially in the conventional uh, manufacturing procedures. Okay, let's go. Uh, go into the casting defects. So casting defects we have, we have uh, three categories. The first category comes under the gas defects. If you see the gas defects, okay, these gas defects are nothing but, first one is blow holes, okay, gas. In the sense, the gases that are entrapped inside the liquid metal after solidification are called gas defects. In that we have different, different wide variety of defects. First one is blow holes. What are blow holes? Read it here. Most of the times these appear on the convex surface. If you see this convex surface here, this is a uh, uh, pictorial depiction. So, and uh, one more thing, if you want to read these defects clearly, you can read in manufacturing science book by Ghosh and Malik, Amitabha Ghosh and Ashok Kumar Malik, A.K. Malik. And these two were professors from IIT Kanpur and they have written uh, this book on manufacturing science. It's very, very, very nice book, good book for undergraduate syllabus. And this book is uh, having some questions which will be directly given in engineering service examination or gate examination. So it's very important. You have that book in your hand if you're, if you're willing to uh, understand good manufacturing science, basics especially, fine. So uh, all these diagrams, all these things I have taken from that book only. All these writings and all though, I have taken from that book only, okay. See this, this uh, hole, blow, whatever this, for all, you know, gas holes, these are trying to float and they are trying to form onto, onto this convex surface. So that's the reason why these are called blow holes. So how to avoid them? We can avoid them by allowing these gases, gases to escape while they are liquefying, while they are cooling. While when you are pouring, the gases should be escaped. No. How can you do that? You can increase the permeability. How can you increase the permeability? Your molding sand should be properly rammed. It should not properly rammed in the sense you should not tightly ram it. Optimum ramming. Ramming in the sense that heating. Next is provide vent holes. Vent holes, in this sense, if you remember, this, there are some spikes. There are some spikes, if you remember, that spikes will be, uh, you know, uh, used to punch, you punch that into your um, molding sand, so that creating some holes, thus by creating that gases to allow uh, escape. And next, and add some allowing elements. Obviously, if you're adding some allowing elements, that allowing elements will eat away these holes, um, blow holes, or eat away these gas bubbles. As these gas bubbles are eaten away, because of that, blow holes will not be formed. So these are the remedies. Next, scar. What is scar? I can give you some analogy. Like if you got hit, let's say you are playing some cricket or maybe you are running here and there. Because of that, you got for you, you fell down onto the ground. Because of that, you got some scar. What is scar? You, you got some injury, right? It is very fresh, so that you can see the skin inside. So that like that. A shallow blow generally forms on the flat casting. So this is kind of, you know, small blow, small injury. 
can see the inner part flesh if you are hitting if you are, your body is getting heated then you can see this okay and what is blister blister is a scar covered by thin layer of molten metal what is that after getting uh, injury you on the next day you see there is some kind of black patch that is formed on your injured injured portion on the injured portion and that is what is called blister in this case of casting this scar is covered by a layer on molten metal which is obstructing the visibility of scar that is called blister all these things are this defects very small small defects okay next is gas holes now this gas holes what happens some some somehow you didn't you know provide a proper uh, you know uh, vent venting system or maybe some permeability is not allowed or maybe some reactions are happening between the molding sand and the liquid metal and then some somehow this small small bubbles are formed and that small small entrapments are called gas hole gas holes and these entrapments what we can see this small 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 gas holes they will try to move here and there and how sir how sir how this uh, holes are formed already you can you told no gas blows no these are the holes that are formed uh, because of the gas entrapment this gas is because of hydrogen why in molding sand we have water am i right in molding sand we are adding uh, silica water clay binders all these things we I mean clay and additives we are adding we have water in that once we have water what happens we are pouring liquid metal if you are pouring liquid metal what will happen to the water it will convert into vapor right or maybe this hydrogen will be dissociated from the what you say uh, water hydrogen and oxygen will be different from this hydrogen in the form of gas is floating here and there and those are called pinholes and that hydrogen will move in different 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 paths and that is why this pinhole porosity is are pinholes are formed and you know what see so this is the equation this pinhole porosity is very severe problem in casting very severe why this pinholes will travel in some some different paths and small lines are formed inside very micro lines dimension wise and those are the places where crack can develop those are the places where crack can develop very easily as the crack is developing what will happen it will try to propagate those those points might be the ignition point for crack and slowly slowly over the period of time they will break under pressure so that is the reason why this is very serious problem in the casting used for storage of liquids and gases if you are storing this kind of uh, uh, high pressure liquids and gases in some container and if the container is having this kind of a porosity that is your pin holes it's very dangerous they'll blast i have literally seen myself in one company when i i worked in my company uh, for two years there i was posted in some workshop uh, as a uh, uh, what you say in the uh, in the in the production planning i have i have been posted in the planning department but anyways i have to roam here and there in the workshop suddenly what happened there were some wheels that they were manufacturing for some uh, some equipment some big wheels they have to manufacture the wheels are uh, are approximately uh, having diameter of our human height it, it is around some you know um, 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 1.7 meter something something like that that much height diameter is there almost all that wheel diameters are of our height okay that what happened those wheels were put somewhere at, at some end and they were supposed to be, be get measured. they were expecting that to be machined okay suddenly the big blast sound has come and that wheel broke into half and then first half the upper half as you know uh, went into air like like some for some 20 30 meters and then it fell down that huge weight got blasted because of this pin holes very danger you have to take care of this properly okay so that is what is here pin hole next next is dross and slag formation so obviously i told you whenever when i was discussing about the um, uh, gating systems and all i told you some lighter impurities will be formed some you know 
denser impurities will be formed. The lighter impurities will be floating on top. Denser impurities will be, you know, returning at the bottom. So the lighter impurities will be caught by the skim bob, and denser impurities will be also be caught by the skim bob. So these are called slag and trough formation. Sometimes, if you are not designing this properly, in the sense, if you are not designing this skim bob properly or strainer, strainer also will be catching some impurities, right? If you are not designing this properly, what happens? This impurities will be settled into the casting, and that is not good. Okay. Next, so this all the effects still F, A, B, C, D, E, F are gas hold gas effects. All these things are related to gas. Next is next is molding material and molding method defects. Okay. So in this we have. Uh, Run out. So, what is this run out? Let me read. Molten metal is leaked into molding sand through mold cavity. Okay. In the sense, like if you are having some molding uh, sand and you are uh, and there is a cavity and you are trying to pour liquid metal into that. Okay. If you are pouring liquid metal into that, what happens? Let's say on the molding valve, there are some places where you some weakness is there. There, there is some weakness. If that weakness is there, what happens? That molding sand will break, and the liquid metal will leak into the molding sand. That leak is known as run out. Okay, it is running out, and will it run out in the sense like it is running in is what proper run out is where we going in a different direction. Okay, so what is the remedy for that? The remedy is nothing but you can you should ram properly so that there won't there won't be any weakness weakness on the molding wall. Or you can improve the strength and hardness of the mold surface by using facing sand. Facing sand is nothing but the sand that you sprinkle after complete ramming. You sprinkle like facing sand. I told you right. You sprinkle the face, facing sand. Some carbonous materials is sprinkled so that some kind of good surface finish is obtained. And also this facing sand will be used for improving the strength of the mold surface. Where this run out will not happen. Fine. Next. Next is penetration. This is almost penetration is like you know it is like uh, uh, run out only, but run out is little longer length because of poor ramming. Penetration is here and there small small penetrations, small 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 small, small, small penetrations are happening just because your sand grains are selection is very poor. Your sand grains are very larger, let's say, and if you are having very large sand grains are occurring side by side. That you know what the small the material will be taking in gaps between that, and because of that your surface finish is not good. So what is the remedy? Select proper fine sand grain. You select a very good fine sand grain, then surface finish will be good. There is no penetration. Or apply mold wash where some carbonous material in the mold cavity in the form of paste, then metal metal is poured into the cavity due to the burning of these carbonous gases are produced. And the state content between this casting to the mold and cast mold surface finish. See how this carbonous material is used. You apply some mold. So after have apply after ramming after removing the pattern, you apply some paste, some kind of a paint kind of thing. Paint means like painty thing, but it's not paint. Carbonous material you paint. Once you paint, what happens? This uh, uh, paint is uh, this uh, paste is attached to the molding wall. When you are pouring liquid metal into that, what happens? This molding wall uh, is reacting with the molten metal. Of course, in between this carbonous metal is there. They will provide some kind of a gas. As it is providing some kind of a gas, it is trying to avoid the contact between your mold wall. And uh, because of that, as the liquid metal is not in contact with the mold wall, the grains irregularities will not be reflecting onto the casting. That is what is important. Okay. Next. Next is swell. What is swell? Swell is swells are nothing but some extra projections because of here run out is because small point where weakness is there and through that point there is it is uh, you know looting the way and it is taking its shape. But here the wall itself is not good. Total wall the mold wall the mold surface wall is having very weak because of that the swell is happening. Okay. Next. Drop and that. This is another very nice, uh, 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 very very probable thing that can happen because of improper ramming. What is that? 
if you're not ramming properly what is happening if you're doing some multi what's you know multi piece or maybe split pattern you're using and you have you have to uh, remove the pattern from the drag box and you have to remove the uh, pattern from the co box and then you're trying to assemble both of them when you're trying to assemble both of them what happens sometimes if you're not ramming properly in the co box some part of the co in the sense some molding sand of the co box will try to re get removed from the co box and then it will drop into the drag box now when you pour liquid metal into the box obviously as this small material molding sand material is coming down there is a space created here the molten metal will take that space and it will be it will be getting solidified like this the right hand side this figure and obviously that is formed onto the drag box so that also will be part of your casting so this kind of object will be formed instead of a plain your plain square uh, cross section this kind of an object is that is called drop and dart okay very important what are the remedies proper ramming or gaggers gaggers are nothing but there are some kind of you know small small uh, but uh, you know horizontal these things you put where that that will fall onto here only rather than falling into the drag box okay so that is what is called dirt dirt and what is a drop and dirt next cuts and washes here also if you are not providing proper gating elements if your runner area cross section is very less or maybe in gate area is very less because of that small 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 passages you are you are being formed as the cross section of that passage is reducing obviously obviously what is the formula of continuity a, rho 1 a1 v1 is equal to rho 2 a2 v v v2 this is your continuity equation if you remember as continuity what is continuity q is what discharge as the liquid metal is getting discharged as the area of cross section is reducing the velocity keeps on increasing if you know that if you remember yes or no yes if you do the fluid mechanics you know that as uh, a1 v1 is equal to constant let's say discharge is constant a1 v is equal to constant a is area of cross section v v1 is velocity if area of cross section is reducing what will happen to the velocity will keep on increasing as velocity is increasing that mixing will happen the turbulence the mixing will happen because of that mixing that surface that molding sand will be taken away from the uh, molding sand and will mix into the casting that is not good that those are called cuts and washes and sometimes it will create some indentation because high velocity is coming and hitting the mold surface so that is what are called cuts and washes so proper gating system is one of the remedy in this case this way or maybe we can increase the strength of mold cap mold itself and next is rat tail and buckle these are also because of you know uh, what is a uh, um, how can i say because you know that if you are pouring liquid metal into the into your uh, uh, mold cavity high temperature you are pouring as your high temperature liquid is being poured into the cavity the molding sand which is which is in contact with the liquid metal the molding sand will try to expand the silica no it will try to expand but it can't expand why because you have some borders you have some restrictions on top and bottom or side and side and right or right, left and right because of the restrictions the molding sand will curl into this shape because there is no room for extension maybe it will curl into like this this is called puck and this is called rattle so rattle and buckle because of that see see at the high temperatures an expansion of thin layer at the sand of the mold phase takes place before the liquid metal at the mold mold phase solidifies as this expansion is obstructed by the flask is, that is what is a boundary the mold phase tends to bulge out forming the v shape so very important rattle and buckle are because of expansion of molding sand all these things what i'm saying are because of molding sand proper molding sand and proper improper gating design okay and next is cap you see this is nothing but again due to improper wrapping this some kind of you know swell is happening and there are some particles that are floating here there is no scab slag inclusions are also same thing some kind of uh, miscellaneous uh, foreign particles are forming into the casting because of uh, improper what you say design of gate these are called slag inclusions until here we are discussing we have discussed about molding sand and molding methods because of that 
some um, defects have been found. Okay. And the next defects are because of pouring met uh, metal. If you're not pouring it uh, with a good temperature, if you're not pouring in a proper time, some defects will be formed. Very, 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 very important defect in this uh, defects. Two defects are very important are misrun and cold shut. Okay. Uh, uh, so many exams have asked these questions. Be it I engineering service, be it Kate, be it whatever it is. So many have asked these questions. Uh, any examinations, be it local examination as well. Any local exam, any uh, state government public service commission also have asked. Especially this kind, this misprint and cold shut are very important. Okay, so due to insufficient fluidity, liquid metals start freezing before reaching the farthest point of the mold cavity. Okay, so fine. What is the, so if you have some mold cavity like this, and it is uh, trying to you know uh, enter into the cavity, and has entered, but it hasn't reached the farthest position, and before reaching it, it got solidified. And that is what is known as misrun. So there is some gap left. There is a room for you know, material to be filled. And what are the reasons? These are the reasons: lack of fluidity, lack of low, uh, mean lack of proper pouring temperature, improper getting design. Either of these three, or all of these three, are the reasons for this misrun. Remedy always the opposite: increase pouring temperature, increase velocity. How you can increase the velocity? Proper getting. That's it. Okay. And cold shut in the other side is if you're pouring from this side and if you're pouring from other side also. And if these two streams are not mingled or fused properly, there is some again gap between that is formed between these two liquid metal streams. And this fusion of streams are not happening. And because of that, this cold shut is being formed. Okay. The two streams of modern metal which are coming from different directions will not fuse properly due to cold shut. This is called cold shut. Again, the problems are because this thing, lack of fluidity, all the things. Now, next is hot cracks and hot tears. These are like because of your residual stresses. What are residual stresses? Because of high temperature gradient, because of very high temperature gradient, what will happen is, you are uh, uh, residual stresses are being formed inside the casting. And once the residual stresses want to relieve themselves, these cracks are formed. And these cracks will lead to tears also. So these are called hot cracks and tears because of residual stresses. Residual stresses are formed because of temperature gradient. You have to understand this. Okay. Next is shrinkage cavity. Already we have seen this thing when we are discussing about the what is it the casting uh, the pattern elements. Uh, in the pattern elements, we have seen that solid shrinkage is responsible uh, for reducing, and the solid shrinkage in oh, no 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 patterns are the one which can take the solid shrinkage uh, uh, elements, and the other two that is liquid and solidification shrinkages. Those can be compensated by a riser. If you are not providing proper riser element, then this shrinkage obviously it will try to you know shrink because it obviously when some material is having some coefficient of thermal expansion alpha, when you are trying to cooling your it will shrink. If you are not providing proper amount uh, um, uh, of material there, it will shrink. No, that is why shrinkage form. So what is the remedy? Good riser design. Sometimes you can provide some chills and padding inside that. They'll be fused and then they'll be trying to avoid the shrinkage cavity. Another is mold shift. Mold shift and core shift. Obviously, we we will use uh, some you know uh, some kind of you know the double pins to match them. But if at all you didn't have that proper double pins or some issues there, then obviously this mold shift will happen because of that mold shift maybe it's because of human error or maybe because of liquid metals also sometimes it happens that mold will shift we are not providing proper clamping mechanism here so instead of getting a square cross section you'll get this kind of a weird cross section or else 
if at all you are having uh, you haven't designed proper core design or print because we have already seen the formula for uh, calculating the scores on the core print right that is uh, uh, the formula is uh, the, what you say g uh, rho into not, not rho g into volume of core into rho m uh, rho m minus rho c we have seen this formula if you haven't designed this properly the core will shift here and there instead of having hollow section at the center it will go it will offset itself and forming the uh, you know this kind of different uh, hole at different place that's not good how do you do that you provide some core prints in chapters to support core so that the core will not float here and there so these are the uh, casting defects and there is see so many casting defects oh my god right five pages of casting defects so that were written very small small font here but if you go to the other uh, topics in our manufacturing you won't find this many defects right. so very important and i've discussed all of them then so here and there i missed out some of uh, small small arguments but i hope you read the manufacturing science book and let me say the page number as well because i have the book right in front of me here uh, the page number of that uh, casting defect let me get the page number also people yeah so i have manufacturing science second edition by amitabh goshen ashok kumar malik um those are in 87th page 87 88 89 okay 87 88 89 these three pages these three pages they'll have this holding defects i mean casting defects okay hope you followed this thing so uh, uh, in the other class what we have done we have discussed some problems but uh, here again there's no point in discussing problems this is the concept uh, they'll be trying to fuse this video into the previous video where we couldn't record properly. Hope the students who wants to watch will be able to watch all these things. Okay. Thank you. If you have any doubts, please let me know. I'm here. I'll be able to address your questions. If still any, if you have any other you know, queries. Only two people are here, but anyways, yeah. Okay then. Thank you. Thanks a lot.